Don't you just love a good card grid? Well, I know I do. Card grids light up the web in my view. They allow us to present our information in a very user-friendly way along with text and graphics. But oftentimes, grids seem to be working great on desktop sizes where we have a lot of space to put our cards in. But as soon as you shrink your screen sizes just a little bit, you're gonna see your cards getting all squished and squashed and all messed up. In this video, we'll fix this problem and we'll create a responsive card grid with angular material components and a bit of CSS magic. And in the end, we'll have this gorgeous looking card grid which neatly adjusts itself to your screen sizes. So let's get started. So first we are going to create a new Angular app and we are going to add Angular material to it. With the latest Angular version 16 CLI, these are the two commands that you need. ng new standalone and ng add Angular material. So here we are going to define a type with a named card content, a title and a description and an image URL which is a string. Next I got some images IDs from Unsplash and I am going to use their public API to get these images. We are going to declare a new signal named cards. It will be of the type of card content that we just created and we are going to give an initial value of empty array. Now signals is a new reactive primitive in Angular. If you want you can check out an introduction to signals in the video linked above. Next we are going to loop through these images and convert them into cards. So we are going to push each element with a title and a description and the image URL like this. Then we are going to set the signal to these cards. Great, so after getting our signal ready, we'll add some template code. Now to do that, we'll first import our material modules that we need. Great, now let's add some template. First, we'll add a toolbar. Then we add a container div with a class of container and a responsive grid. Then inside of it, we add our material card. Now you can check out it more in the documentation if you want. Then we'll add the ng4 loop and we're going to loop through the cards and we're going to get the value of the card signal that we just declared. Now after this we're just going to build the card itself. So we're just going to add the header with the title then we are going to add the image with the image URL and then we are going to add the description and lastly we are going to add the like and share buttons and you can add more or less on the card as you need. Okay so let's see how this looks. Okay so this looks pretty awful. The images are splashed up across the whole width and they don't have any widths themselves. So let's add some styles for it. Firstly, we are going to add the container padding styles. We are going to add a 24 pixels padding. Let's see how this looks. Okay, so there's a padding around the cards now. Next, we are going to add some styling to the image. First, we are going to make the image width 100%. That means it's going to span the card width and not more than that. Then we are going to make a fixed height of 200 pixels. Now this is really important if you want to design a good looking card because images can be of different sizes and we don't want our card to actually adjust in height based on those sizes. So we are going to give a fixed height to the image itself. And to deal with the problem that is going to come across with the squishing of the image inside of that uh, image element, we are going to add an object fit cover prop. This will ensure that the source image, whatever its size or dimensions are going to retain their aspect ratio or come close to that and cover the area that is provided for it. Great, let's see how this looks. And the images are now contained within the card. Great, but where is the grid? So next, let's add the grid. So we're going to add a responsive grid class name and we're going to add the display grid CSS property. And then initially we are going to give four columns to the grid and a gap of 24 pixels. Okay, so let's see how this looks. Great, so our grid looks pretty nice. But what happens if we go in our developer tools and we try to squish our grid? Well, the grid does indeed get squished, which is what we don't want. We want the grid cards to go on the next row or, or to reduce in number, in fact, when we squish or we expand. So how to do that? Now to do that, what we do is we are going to use a magic CSS syntax and we're going to change things over here. So instead of the columns being four, we are going to make it autofill. This means that it's going to automatically find out how many columns it needs. And how is it going to find it out? Well, we can give a min max function here, which will be a range of values. Now the maximum of this will be one FR, which means it would fit the whole area equally. But what will be the minimum? Now this is what you need to decide. So in our case, I'm going to give it as 250 pixels. So this is the width, which would be the minimum width that you would want your cards to get squished because after that the card is going to wrap onto the next line and it's not going to squish. So this would be the best width that your card appears to be in. So in my case it's 250 pixels and now let's try this out. Great, so our grid looks similar to before but the difference is when we go into responsive mode we can see that it so neatly goes away on the next line or comes back to our line and even if you make your screen size pretty large, it's going to adjust, keep adjusting itself and bring more cards up on the row if it finds space for it. So the result is a very neatly looking card grid which is responsive and which you can change 
according to screen sizes. This way you don't have to design specifically for mobile screens or add any special handling for it. Great. So if you like this video and you think that uh, this has helped you in some way, please be sure to subscribe to this so that I can create more content like this. Thanks for watching.